at Sunday morning are great fans of the piano, as you know. So when we heard about what's happened in Cincinnati, we just had to send Martha Teichner to look into it. The campus can't contain it. There's music everywhere. Not just on stages and in practice rooms. It escapes into hallways. It seeps under doorways. It infects everyone with its glorious exuberance. Since 1867, what is now called the College Conservatory of Music and is part of the University of Cincinnati has been known for its excellence, but unfortunately not well known enough to compete with more famous schools. New York's Juilliard, for example. It's kind of nice to have all this sort of music spilling out of yeah, all these windows. It it's fantastic. It's so when Douglas Neans became dean last September, he set out to change that. My ambition for this school is to be a, a global player, to be one of the best music schools in the world. And indeed, it really already is. But how to get the music world to recognize it? Even before being hired, Neans noticed something. I was just so impressed when I walked through this building, except for the pianos. Well, this is uh, where we do all the work and all the pianos. Now, this one looks sort of like it's... It's uh, from 1921, I believe. Eric Wolfley is in charge of maintaining the school's 200-plus pianos, which used to mean constantly having to rebuild worn-out wrecks, many of them older than he was. Not anymore thanks to Dean Neans and his grand plan. I just laid the charge down to, to faculty at my first interview. What did you say? I said, let's make this an all Steinway school. And I think there was enthusiasm, a little bit of incredulous laughter. Only the best and most prestigious conservatories are all Steinway schools. So the laughter turned to amazement when Neans got the job and convinced the university to buy new pianos. What we have for you this morning. Welcome. Well. Not just a few replacements, 165 brand new Steinways. Price tag, $4.1 million. This is going to be a lot of fun. It was the largest single purchase in the company's storied history. Cabinet maker Heinrich Steinweg and his sons anglicized their name to Steinway soon after moving to New York City from Germany. They opened for business in 1853. Their goal? To make the finest pianos in the world. It takes a year to make a Steinway by hand. No wonder husband and wife piano professors Eugene and Elizabeth Pridinoff were excited when they arrived at the Steinway factory in the New York City borough of Queens to pick out six of the Cincinnati Conservatory's new pianos. Why does it spin you around? <laughs> it's like so many toys. Which one do I play open, with first? Yeah, which one do I open first? All of them, of course. This has a very nice sound, too. It was just before Christmas last year, and the Pridinoffs were like two kids who'd hit the jackpot with Santa Claus. Yeah, this is, this is, this is my piano. That's yeah, this is my piano. I like his piano, yes. <laughs> the Pridinoffs romped through piano's greatest hits. Mm -hmm. 
My heart is all over the place with these instruments. I, I want part of all of these instruments, you know. Finally, one by one, the lids came down. And then the instruments were packed up, numbered, loaded, and sent on their way to face the music. A week later, the pianos arrived in Cincinnati. 21 Steinways, the second of seven shipments. Okay, these two are going in the same room. Okay. Four, There's two five. pianos in those rooms. We gotta move out first. So. Well, so I got it. it was controlled chaos. These boxes weigh half a ton. Old non-Steinways were moved out. The new pianos moved in. Okay. One by one, they were deployed like covert agents to foment a change for the better from within. The Pridinovs couldn't wait to get their hands on them. Every touch you do is just a response. It has a soul. It, it, I, the more I play it, the more I'm happy that I chose it. It's just an incredible instrument. Here's proof that the rapture is contagious. I think it gives a lot more confidence when you're playing on a, a, a good piano to, to hear the sound that's coming out of it. Open any door and inside, you'll find a piano and a dream. June graduate Roshan Murph majored in jazz. I want to perform, I do want to teach, and I'm also going to start a production company. But Janet Buswell Finch put her own musical career on hold until she'd raised her family. At 54, she's spending seven hours a day at the piano. Now it's my time, and I'm back, and I'm full blast. I love it. Seth Killen is getting his PhD in voice. So much of singing is communicating, and if the piano is incapable of giving different colors, then we're incapable of the full effect of performance, the full effect of communicating. For Asaf Somer, there is no question that good pianos matter. The situation here before was a little bit, the instruments were a little pretty old, and sometimes it's very hard to control, and when you get these brand new uh, Steinways, you feel like you can do everything. It's an energy, so all of these instruments playing, all of the rehearsals, the, the magnitude of this many students, this many, uh, instruments. It, it's, um, it multiplies. For the College Conservatory of Music, the calculation has paid off. Our piano applications have, have gone up uh, dramatically already. Uh, we've already had more confirmations than we've had in many years. This equation for excellence is simple, really. You do the math. Take 165 pianos times 1,400 students. Now figure in that the average Steinway lasts 50 years. What do you get? Just listen.